Hi everybody, I'm Megan McDonald and I'm the author of the Judy Moody books and the books about her little brother Stink published by Candlewick Press. Welcome to Comic-Con. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about uh, the behind the scenes of how some of my writing process of how I come up with these books. So you may not believe it, but most of my books start out looking something like this. Can you believe it? It's just a napkin with notes scribbled on the napkin. I don't always have my notebook around, so when I get an idea, I scribble it down on whatever I have, and the scribbles on this napkin became the book Judy Moody Gets Famous. I have piles and piles of little scraps of paper like that with ideas on them, and some actually turn into books. But when I first thought of Judy Moody and she was going to be a character with a lot of moods, something that my sisters reminded me of. I have four older sisters and lots of the Judy Moody stories come from growing up with so many sisters, but they reminded me that I am a moody person too. And um, they got out this picture from when I was very young, like one or two years old. This is me, Megan McDonald, when I was in a mood. That's me laying face down on the driveway. My mom and dad were trying to take a nice picture of me, but I was in a mood and I didn't want my picture taken, so I threw a tantrum. And now you know how I grew up to write about a girl with a lot of different kinds of moods. Um, but not everything comes from my own life or my childhood. Sometimes I might get an idea for a book just from something I read in the paper. So I save all of these clippings. For example, this article is about a hitchhiking robot, which I want to use in a book, and um, an article about a principal who was trying to encourage her students to read. And if they read a certain amount, she agreed that she would dress up in a gorilla suit. So I thought that might be funny for Judy's and Stink's principal to do. Um, but then when I have a bunch of ideas and I narrow it down to what I'm going to write my book about, I get out a notebook. I have one notebook that I dedicate to each book that I write and all the scraps and ideas and clippings go into that notebook. So this is my notebook that became the book Stink and the Harry scary spider. This is the newest Stink book. And in this book, Stink is afraid, he's very afraid of spiders, but one day he goes out in the yard and he finds a South American pink toed tarantula. And he's afraid that somebody's exotic pet has escaped. So he wants to rescue it, but he's scared of spiders. So a lot, so he gets his friend Webster Gomez to help him. And Webster, who likes spiders, tries to desensitize Stink so that he won't be so afraid. And he does things like they come up with hand shadows of a spider, they fold origami spiders that can crawl up his arm. He reads a chapter from Charlotte's Web to Stink. Um, and he sings the Itsy Bitsy Spider song to him in Spanish. He even tells him some spider jokes. So eventually Stink overcomes his fear of spiders, but this all started with um, something that I clipped out and I had in the notebook. Here's the very original article. It's from the Washington Post This that inspired it all. And it says, theoretically, spiders could eat everyone in one year. And I read that headline and I just stopped. I was like, what? How is that possible? But it's actually true. Stink is very into science, so I have to make sure the facts are true in the books. And um, it's really true that if you took the weight of all the humans on earth, it's still not as much as what spiders eat in a year. So in other words, spiders could eat all the humans in one year and still be hungry. Can you believe it? So I had a lot of clippings of um, spider things, some kinds of facts and things about different spiders. And of course, I had a picture to inspire me since I was writing about a South American pink toed tarantula. So this is the tarantula featured in the book that I hang up on the wall when I'm writing to inspire me. Um, I have some scribbles and drawings of spiders that I'm testing out for Stink to draw. And Webster sings the Itsy Bitsy Spider, so I had to find out what are the lyrics in Spanish to the Itsy Bitsy 
spider, even all the parts of the spider, so that I know when I refer to the spider what I'm talking about. So all of these go into my notebook, and eventually I go to the computer and I start writing the book. That takes me several months to write a first draft, and when I'm done, my first reader is my husband, who I read it aloud and he gives me feedback. So then I go in, I take his feedback, I self-edit, and then I'm ready to send it to my editor. And then my editor has a lot of suggestions, so here's what it looks like. This is just one page from the first Judy Moody book, but this shows you what it looks like. All the red marks are suggestions that my editor had for how to make it a better story because each time you go through and you write and rewrite, it might make it funnier or tighter or a better ending. Each time it makes it a better book. Okay, so that gives you a glimpse of my process, but I'm sitting here in my study where I write the books and I, I'm gonna hop up now and grab the camera. I wanna zoom in a little bit and be able to show you some of these objects that inspire a lot of the things in the Judy Moody and Stink books. I can't, I won't show you everything, but you'll be able to spot some that I don't even mention. So here we go. The very first thing I wanted to show you is what I think could be Judy Moody's eraser collection. <laughs> And I collect erasers, so I know what would be in a big jar that she might collect. Judy wants to be a doctor when she grows up, like Elizabeth Blackwell, first woman doctor. So here, here's what could be in her Band-Aid collection. And um, here's the great women of science ruler that uh, Judy uses to measure stink in the first book. And she says, stink, the women of science ruler does not lie when Stink finds out that he's shrinking. Um, in Judy Moody Saves the World, she won the Giraffe Award for sticking her neck out for others. So I imagine this could be kind of like a trophy of the Giraffe Award. And of course she has her Magic 8 Balls, the regular one, and the Happy Magic 8 Ball that only gives you happy answers or positive answers. This could be what might be Judy's Sock Monkey collection. And her very famous ABC gum collection. That stands for Already Been Chewed. And this is actually an actual prop from the movie Judy Moody and the Not Bummer Summer. They made the ABC gum out of little bits of clay. Um, I have some stink things as well. You can see the actual giant jawbreaker here that inspired the book Stink and the Incredible Super Galactic Jawbreaker. And sometimes if you look very closely, usually on my de desk, there's something that gives you a little hint about something that I'm writing about that isn't even published yet. So this gives you a little sneak peek into something in the next Stink, stink book. Okay, I'm gonna put the camera back now and I have one last thing that I wanted to show you. Last of all, I'd like to show you the cover of my brand new Judy Moody book that'll be coming out in, let's see, September of 2021. And here's what the cover will look like. It's called Judy Moody in a Monday Mood. And in this book, Judy is, she wakes up on Monday and it's boring. A boring old Monday and she's kind of got a bad attitude. You might even say she has a bad attitude. Code word, code word. And so she tries to think of how could she turn around a bad attitude, a bad attitude or a bad mood. And she decides she's gonna come up with a fun holiday for every day of the week. Well, this was inspired by a calendar somebody gave me that says every day is a holiday. I had no idea there are all these national holidays that are really funny that um, are on the calendar. So we think of July 4th as Independence Day, but did you know it's also Sidewalk Egg Frying Day? Um, on July 12th is National Paper Bag Day. Maybe you can think of something creative to do, um, an art project with a paper bag. On the 13th is Embrace Your Geekness Day, so you get to geek out on that day. The 21st is National 
junk food day when we get to eat lots of junk food. And my all-time favorite is July 27th, take your pants for a walk day. <laughs> so I hope you'll read Judy Moody in a Monday mood. Thanks so much for spending some time with me. It's great to see everybody. Bye.